Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Zorin OS 15. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go through and, and give it some ratings. My first impressions are that it has the look and feel of Windows with a lighter coloring scheme here in the background. There seems to be a very similar layout here and it feels most closely related to Windows 7. I actually prefer the Windows 7 layout compared to the Windows 10 one. Let me know which one you like in the comments section. The default desktop here is XFCE, but as you can tell, it's been customized for newcomers transitioning to Linux from Windows. And this is one of Zorin's biggest focuses, which is to make that transition seamless. I think that their goal aligns with what I see here in front of me because it really does seem Windows set centric. With that being said, let's go ahead and go through some of the Zorin OS 15 components here and get a feel for what's all included in the operating system. Also, if you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. As you can see here at the bottom, we have a taskbar, which is very similar to what you would see in Windows. On the background, you can highlight and put files. We'll create one later so you can see. And on the bottom right, you have the time. And if you click on it, you get a small calendar on the right hand side, which I really do enjoy that they've put in. You also can add other clocks if you want from around the world as well as select a location for the weather so it gives you updates on the weather. On the left side you can turn on and off notifications and you can either even tether a Android phone and get notifications on your computer. Left of that you'll see a couple icons here. One thing that I did notice is that the battery life icon in the taskbar doesn't seem to adjust itself to the amount of power currently in the battery. Instead, if you click on the icon set, you see the actual ba battery power left, which right now for me is 62%. Hopefully, if your battery is low, you realize it, or maybe the icon might change colors when it's super low. But I found it a little interesting that it's not filling up this level here in the battery. It makes it hard to tell without clicking on here. So when you click on this icon set, you have a few options here. First is to adjust your volume from zero to 100%. And then you have the current connected LAN connection. It will, it will be Wi-Fi if you are connected via Wi-Fi. And if you click on here, you have a couple options here. You can go to your wired settings as well as turn off the connection. Then your battery, if you click on that, you can go to power settings and change up your power settings and then you have the current user logged in and a few options for the user. On the bottom, you have a few more icons which allow you to access the settings for Zorin, log out or suspend a computer, and shut down, restart, and log out using the power icon. And on the left side, we have software, the file manager, web browser, which is Firefox, and then the start menu, which has the Zorn logo on it. I do like how they all look like shortcuts down here on the left, and you can add more if you choose to do so. You can't right click on the taskbar at the bottom. It doesn't allow you to go to settings from there, but let's go ahead and explore changing out the background here, even though I do like what we currently have. If you right click on the background, you will have a couple options here to create new folders, documents, and uh, to open a terminal in the current place that you are at. But we want the change background option. And once that comes up, we're gonna click on the background currently. And let's change it to something fun here. Let me look through. This seems kind of fun. Let's select that and see what that kind of looks like. Wow. Yeah, almost like a post-apocalyptic deal going on here. Very gloomy. I'm going to change that one more time. Let's see what else they have. I like this right here. Some mountains and what seems to be some type of a lake. Yeah, that looks really cool. I do also like on the bottom how they have the transparent background to the taskbar. You can see 
more of uh, the wallpaper because of that in the, in the background. Next, let's move on to the file manager view so we can see what their file manager looks like. And that's accessible by hitting files here. Let me make this a little bigger here so we can see it. So this seems very simplistic. You have all the directories that you would expect in the home folder, and this is a home of the current user, which is Savvy Nick. You also have a back and forwards button, and you can click here for a couple more options here. Preferences if you want to change the layout or if look and feel of the file manager. You also have the ability to search the current directory as well as change what the icons look like, whether they're in a list view or a grid view. And then you have more options if you go on the right hand side. You can see that it seems like the default is actually 67%, which is interesting because if I hit it, then we reset to 100%, which is quite big. I actually like it at 100% more because I can see my icons better. And if you go to the list view, I like that even better. So a few more things you got here. You can open up and create a new folder. Put a folder name if you hit this icon here on the left. And then you can create more tabs if you hit this one on the right. You can also bookmark a location if necessary. And choose what columns are visible if you can see or not hidden files. And reload the page. Now I have a bunch of homes opened up, but I can, you know, be searching other places. Let's say documents. Then I got home. I got music here and I got videos on the end. So I got my videos, music, home and documents all opened up in one file manager. It's a great thing to have on the left hand side. You can see a few shortcuts and I've already opened a few of them up, but you can also access your trash. If you put anything in there, it's much like the recycling bin and your other locations will help you add network devices such as other computers and anything else that you would like to connect to via the network. If we exit out of here, next we'll move on to the software manager view. So if you hit software, this icon set here in the bottom, we'll see that we have a bunch of software available to us. One suggestion is to get VLC media player. It's a great media player to use with it ton of supporting formats. Um, one thing that I would like is to get something that I would use in uh, Windows and that's to listen to some music. I would get Spotify. So let's see if they have Spotify. So we can use the search in the top right here and for some reason I don't see it here. Let's go back to all here. I think I misclicked here. Spotify. And here we go, we do have it. So let's just install it while we have the chance here and see how easy it is to install something. So I hit the install button, put my password in, and it's installing here. So we'll launch it after it installs. If you went ahead and made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. And once your application is installed successfully, you'll get the launch button. So you hit launch and it should pop up here. And look, it was easy as that. Now we have Spotify. So instead of logging in here, I'm going to exit out. And also, now that we have seen what the software manager view looks like, we're going to exit out. It's a great graphical way to install your applications and easy to use instead of having to use a terminal. And what, with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and use their terminal. So let's look and see what their default terminal looks like. If we hit open terminal, we can see that the default terminal here has a white background and that the user and host name is in a lime color green. As you highlight, it seems to also be green, but as you get to the commands, it seems to be a dark gray color. You do have a bunch of options here at the top. You have the file to create multiple tabs which I really enjoy that you can create tabs in here. Not all distributions offer this option, but it's very nice when you're working with multiple terminals at once. It makes it non-cluttered. And you don't really have the option to create new tabs until you go up here to File New Tab 
and then you can actually use this icon on the right in order to create more tabs as necessary. If you hit the drop down, you can see names a little better and use the alt number feature in order to change between your tabs. So if you hit alt two, it'll change to this tab, of course. A few more things here, you can create a new window as well as edit preferences. In the view, you can do a full screen view. You can zoom in or out. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see commands a little easier. It's interesting as you zoom in, it does maximize your terminal. And then if you do a search, you can find text patterns. As well as in terminal, you can set various encodings and reset or clear the terminal if you'd like. In the tabs option, you can go ahead and kind of move through tabs. I don't see that this is very necessary because you can just click on the tabs themselves. And then you have the help, so help option, which you can look at contents and about this terminal. So if we look at about, we can see what type of terminal it is. It's the default GNOME terminal, of course, adjusted a little bit, and it uses uh, version 3.28. Going back to the terminal, let's just issue one little command here, lsal, which will give me all the current files in the directory that I'm at in a list view. Everything's fairly easy to see. The only thing I could complain about a little bit is the green color for the username and host name. Everything else is very easy to see. It doesn't really hurt your eyes or anything. At least it doesn't hurt mine. I do like the fact that it's not a transparent background. That way things in the background don't get in the way. Let's go ahead and go to the desktop and I'll go ahead and make a file here. So I can use, let's see, VI to create a file. And I'm just gonna call it VI file on desktop. Let's get, be very creative here. <laughs> and I'll put a little bit of test text in here, write those changes. And you can see now that I have the file on desktop, file that I just created. And you can move it around in the background here, which I do like the fact that they have a lot do not offer this option. As you can see, by default, the icon is fairly large here. You can, of course, change what the size of these icons are in the background. The terminal is great here. I do enjoy it. You can see everything very clearly. We'll go ahead and just do top here for a moment, kind of to look at processes. And you can see that I have a fair amount of memory free here, about a gig used. None of my swap is being used. As you can tell here, I've got plenty free, about 1.5 gigs it looks like. And then you can see some of the processes that are running in the background, not really resource intensive. It looks like the GNOME shell is the most intensive there, kind of going between 5.9% of memory usage and about 3% in the CPU usage, kind of jumping up and down. We'll go out of here and we'll close the window. And we'll go to the bottom left here where we can type in and search for various items in the operating system, as well as use shortcuts on the left-hand side to access various applications and utilities that come with Zorin. So we can go to such things as Office and you get the Libra Office as the default Office Suite here in, Le in Zorin, as well as access to a calendar in our contacts. If we hit the back button, we go back to our subcategories. If we hit accessories, we have such things as the calculator, the file manager, maps, and a to simple to-do list if we want to use that. Hit back again, if we hit games, we get some games here. And then in the graphics, we can go ahead and see a document viewer, a draw, as well as a simple scan tool. We've already been through Office. The sound and video give you a few options here for video applications. And then in the system tools, you'll see much of Zorin's standard tools here that you can use. Zorin Connect was what I was talking about at the beginning, which allows you to connect or tether a Android device to your Zorin operating system and allows you to get text messages right at the computer. So a few other things, of course, is settings here, which we'll explore in a moment. And then if we hit the back, we have utilities which contains our terminal. One other thing I wanted to show you in terminal was if you log in as a super user, the user can see 
asterisk by default when entering in a password. This isn't the default for many Linux distributions, but I do enjoy the fact that you can do this because at least you can keep a character count of how many characters you've used in your password so far and figure out whether or not you're typing in the right thing, which I wasn't, but if I do, there you go, type my password in, and now I can see that I'm logged into the root user. I see that the color has changed from green to this gray color, which is interesting. They should have just kept it gray in my opinion. But let's exit out of here again. And let's go check out the settings. We can go down to the bottom here and go to our system tools, settings. And in settings we have the default display settings as well as keyboard, mouse, printers, removable media, Thunderbolt, Wacom tablet, and color. Displays allows you to change the display settings up, so your resolution, orientation, and to turn on or off the nightlight. If we hit this back arrow, since I was last in displays, where I changed my display settings, it defaulted to this devices tree. But I want the default settings screen, so I hit the back button, and now we have the default settings. So if you were to go under devices, we'd be back to where we were last at. In the general settings, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, appearance notifications, and a slew of other things here, such as uh, for sound, our power, network settings, everything you need and want to access for settings will be in here. Everything's of a neutral color. I, I do enjoy how they have everything laid out in the color scheme here. You can see on the bottom that if an application is currently open, can see a preview if you hover over as well as a little dark gray line at the bottom that tells you that this application is currently being ran and used and is opened up in the background. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here. Zorin OS is a Ubuntu long-term support based distribution that is tailored to new Linux users coming from other operating systems such as Windows and Mac. They do give these users a familiar desktop experience so that the transition is minimal. They can get right in and feel comfortable using the operating system without a massive learning curve. It seems like a great place to start. It also offers pre-built computers for users since they're partnered with Star Labs that you can get up and running with their operating system right away. Taking away the install portion of Linux which either way with this distribution is very easy to do. And at this point, I'd like to go through and give Zorin OS 15 some ratings. It's simple to use and has most of the features that a user wants and needs for everyday computing use with access to LibreSuite, a fine Mozilla web browser, and plenty of applications from their software manager app. It also focuses on deploying a desktop environment, which is much like the Windows layout, and helps users who are transitioning over from Windows. For those reasons, I'm giving it a user-friendliness rating of 9 out of 10. Since Zorin is based on the stable release of Ubuntu and doesn't really focus on performance, it can be customized, but don't expect it to be focused on saving your resources and being very efficient out of the box. Instead, Zorin focuses heavily on the user desktop experience as a first, and therefore I'll give it a performance rating of 7 out of 10. This distribution is based off of Ubuntu stable release, and I wouldn't expect it to be on the cutting edge of development because that may cause it to lag behind the latest and greatest available features for Linux, so I'll give it a features rating of 7 out of 10. Finally, since Soren is based off of Ubuntu, it also allows you to use the Ubuntu community for questions about the operating system. Zorin also has its own documentation and community who seem to be fairly active and has been around for a while now. I'll give it a sustainability rating of 7 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 37 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of Zorin OS 15. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.